Hello, everybody. We are back. I have been in the ether for the last few weeks, drowning in sorrow. No, I've just been very, very busy uh, with life. And so I have not made a video to my utter shame, but we are getting back on track. Starting today, I wanted to do a review of Magicians Impossible, which is a book that I just randomly grabbed at the the good old indigo or chapters as some people know it as bookstores are really vanishing at a massive rate there's there's so few that you can find these days especially here in montreal so it's nice every once in a while to just catch these random new books and i went into magicians impossible with a pretty good feeling uh really cool cover even though it's kind of vague uh and just just this it had this sense of like a very fast paced kind of dark gritty magical society kind of vibe uh and it is pretty much that i i i'm gonna try to start off with the positive about this book but to be honest this is gonna lean very much more towards the negative um the first is that i mean if you think of this book as the script for a movie you are going to enjoy it so much more because that is what it sort of feels like. It feels like someone took the script of a movie, the pacing, the plot, and how how everything just kind of gets thrown at you in a film that's trying to like mush things together within an hour, half, two hours. That's how Magician Impossible feels. And if you think of it like that, if you think of it like as though it's the script of a film, it's kind of more more easily appreciated as a novel. The magic in this book is high-paced, like high-octane thriller. It's just pounding into you. So the, the, the story follows this young man named Jason Bishop, who, of course, is lost, is confused. He's a little older than most protagonists are in books. He's 30 years old, but he doesn't know. He feels like he was meant for something more. And, of course, all his dreams come true. <laughs> just like in a movie, you know, he, he finds out that his dad was a magician he's a magician and and not only you know not some reading a book boring magician he's the kind of person who can literally bend reality to his will and so they're capable of you know telekinetically moving objects uh manipulating minds shifting their own uh, ways of, of of looking they can uh what's called blinking or teleporting you know depending on the level of skill that a mage has uh, there's many different names and words for this magicians mage uh, they have titles uh, depending on the ranks that they go through so jason bishop kind of like falls into this world he goes from this really mundane which is what they call humans in this book mundane world of like human uh, just you know working at a bar to all of a sudden he finds out that he's this powerful mage and this secret society is existing and he's thrust into it it, it is very cinematic in its feel and in its pacing and so that would probably be the only positive thing i have about it if you're just really into action this kind of book has a lot of action a lot of just high paced just really cool sounding fight scenes between mages and them going at each other it just falls apart for everything else as jason falls into this world of mages nothing is explained he goes uh, he is shown to this quite interesting concept of this area known as the citadel and the athenium where there are all these really interesting magical magical devices being used and there's training he sees young children being trained it's very much like harry potter meets the magicians uh, it, it, it seems really interesting you think he's going to get into this and be involved in the society and get to know all these kids and the adults and be kind of like cross but there's so much potential there instead he is just sort of he blows through every stage of learning how to be a mage and how to become more powerful within like three days <laughs> and just kind of skips forward through the whole process so you don't appreciate any of the process of being a mage you don't you see the kids and the other people learning but 
never get to know any of them. He randomly meets some other people, but their friendships that he supposedly develops are so vaguely just scattered throughout the entire series that you don't really care. You don't really feel close to any of the people around. There's maybe one character, Tio, who Jason becomes a bit close to because you see his background, but overall, the author, Brad Abraham, he just kind of like gives you a page or two of someone's background and then you're supposed to feel some kind of like, of course, every person who Jason meets has a woe is me, like rough childhood story or very bad things happen to those people. And so it's supposed to kind of tug at your heartstrings quicker. But because it's just thrown in there, you just feel like, oh, okay, okay. Even Jason's connection with his father and all the issues within the novel itself trying to connect you to his childhood and whatnot it works to a degree but again you never really get to know the father and nothing is explained and I think that's that's the biggest issue is there's some cool things thrown at you throughout this entire series so like I said this, this concept of the Athenium the Citadel where the mages are living uh, the concept of the balance between I don't want to call it good and evil it's more like order and chaos two sides of magic so the people uh, Jason is going against in this novel known as the Golden Dawn uh, and and it, it just ends up becoming extremely vague though because you don't really find anything out about the Golden Dawn you don't really find out anything about the mage society he's a part of which is known as the invisible hand uh, the little tiny bits and pieces you get are so again scattered throughout the series that it doesn't paint any cohesive whole. So you don't really feel connected to Jason because Jason doesn't seem to be connected to anyone. Everybody's lying to him. Everybody's screwing him around. Nobody's telling him the truth. Uh, the main objective, the sort of focal point of the story of you know, what is special about Jason and why the mages need him and what he's going to find ends up being kind of redundant and doesn't seem to matter in the slightest. And the big twist at the end of the series, which is supposed to be this thing that has changed the entire world in this novel ends up being extremely vague. And this, this novel is written back in 2017. I've looked online to see if there's a second book. So, so I could sort of forgive how the series progressed and how it ended if there was a third, uh, a second book in the, in the process, but it doesn't seem like it. I went on Brad Abraham's site. I don't see anything being said about a sequel to this novel. So it seems to have been really meant to be a standalone novel. And it's, you can't make a book like this as a standalone novel. It goes nowhere. <laughs> it literally goes nowhere. And that is basically, if I were to sum up what is wrong with this book, is that Brad Abraham attempted to do 27 different things took every single plot point and brought it nowhere. So by the end of it, you don't care about any of Jason's friends he's met. You don't care about the enemies because they end up just being completely random and erratic and you never become emotionally attached to them. The magical systems, the magical world, the lore behind it, a little tidbit is shown here and there, but again, it, it ends up falling flat and doesn't really go anywhere because nothing is explained. Uh, the cool concepts behind the Citadel and the Athenium, which are the areas that the Invisible Hand are living in, the mages are living in, goes nowhere again. Where does it come from? How did it come to be? Um, and things are very tidily like cleaned up in this world. So because of the balance between order and chaos uh, when mages and the golden dawn fight out in the real world and humans are, are seeing this well the world rewrites itself just rebalances so all the damage that is done by magic just poof just fixes itself at the end of the day and everybody forgets about it although if humans are killed during a fight between the mages and the golden hand then people just they're dead that's it. And I guess the world just makes everyone else come up with a different reason to how they died. Or about. Again, it's not explained. It's just kind of thrown out there. So where magic comes from, why certain people can do certain things, uh, why the enemies are really doing what they're doing, nothing is kind of solidified in any way, shape, or form, which could be fine. I mean, if I take a, a, an example of, let's say, Neil Gaiman's 
uh, Neverwhere. There's tons of magic that isn't explained, but it is completely acceptable because it's wrapped in this fairy tale like mystery and it's meant to be like that. People just they live within it. Magic is so much a part of who people are within Neverwhere that it is okay that things are not fully explained in the same way that you cannot fully explain, you know, you know, why we're, I'm six feet tall and why someone else is five feet tall. We can say genetics and this and that, but we don't really know why one thing is chosen over another person. The same way in the, the Neverwhere novel, people just have the abilities they have. There's things that have become because of what they are and just the way Neil Gaiman focuses in and just really develops his characters and the feel of the world you don't mind it so much you still want to know more but you just don't mind it in Brad Abraham's uh, book it just nothing is explained the characters are not developed well it I, I want to say more positive about it I, I mean I, I blew through this in a few hours it's it's a fun read it's enjoyable like i said if you think about it like a film just like this action-packed you know everybody we all find these action movies that are being thrown out these days that just have some cool cgi effects there's a lot of explosions there's a lot of bangs a lot of like fighting and you enjoy it but there was really no point to it and the story was kind of vague and whatever and you didn't mind that's what this book is so if you just want a quick read that you can enjoy and just kind of forget about after that is what magicians impossible is uh, so i would recommend it to people who just want a quick read but uh, i definitely wouldn't spend a lot of money on it and i definitely wouldn't go out of my way to get it uh, it's unfortunate i think brad abraham if he tries to continue the series or maybe starts a whole new one with a better conceptual idea of like what he wants to do and definitely more less characters more character development uh, and more explanations of what the hell is happening in his world, I think would do a lot better. But for now, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, so I do want to talk a little bit in more of a spoiler concept for people who have read the book and maybe want to hear about it. So if you haven't read it, you don't want to hear spoilers, pop off. We are going to continue uh, for a few minutes. I, I definitely do, um, as I said before, like even... I, again, I, after having said all that negativity about it, I don't really have that much to say, but it's just for those of you who have read the book, the character development in this novel, <clears throat> excuse me, is so freaking erratic. I have never been more annoyed. Even, I think her name was Allegra, Allegra, I'm, I'm blanking on her name right now, the female a character who I, I thought would be sort of a love interest for Jason. You, it, it sort of has that twist to it, but then ends up going nowhere. And so he finds out all these things about her past and how she developed and became so powerful. She's kind of showcased as this ridiculously powerful mage, but it's pointless. <laughs> it is pointless there's no reason for her to be so strong because she serves no purpose to the story she doesn't help jason in any particular way she doesn't do anything she's just really tough and really powerful and there's no real relationship between her and him except i don't understand it's supposed to be something developing in the future she was supposed to be an enemy again not explained and so from from just a frustration standpoint i don't get the point of, of this goddamn character allegra uh jason is just annoying as shit he, he does develop a little bit better as by the end of the novel but just this whole concept of like i want to be special i want to feel like i'm something it's so tropey and so just kind of sad and pathetic that the fact that he's just kind of given everything without any explanation, he just kind of blows through his abilities and get becomes a war seer so quickly and then a diabolist, and yet he hasn't earned anything, he hasn't learned anything, it just kind of comes to him. It just makes it boring. It's sort of an OP story without him actually being OP because he gets his ass whooped half the time. <laughs> he's not that strong. Again, Brad just didn't seem to know where he wanted to go with this series. Um, 
the whole concept of the sphere of destiny was pointless. I, I, again, don't understand. So it broke the balance. But why do we care? Do we care as the, as the reader? We, we don't care. It doesn't do anything. In fact, it seems to be better off because the fact that everything just gets fixed and these two groups are just fighting against each other over and over again for eternity, again, pointless. What the hell is the point of the novel? There's no, no focal point for anything. Uh, the fact that Jason could read the uh, sigillium, the, 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 the sigils and, and designs within the paintings, again, not explained. Why can't he? Because he's an oracle? But then Vasilia, the other oracle, why can't she read it? That makes no sense. Why does she get... Uh, Vasilia is another character who just doesn't make any goddamn sense with the novel. So she is the, is she the first mage? she the first oracle why does when she die her spirit gets transferred into another body who's doing that why are they doing that what does she serve as a purpose in a novel she can sort of see memories and like see the future a little bit but what what is the point of her <laughs> i think even even in the spoiler concept like i i literally cannot grasp the purpose of almost all the characters in this damn novel it pisses me off so much but yet i still kind of enjoyed it because of the like how quickly it went through and all the action and how like you can really sort of visualize these gigantic battles and it's sort of for anyone who's a harry potter fan who sees when dumbledore i think it was in the fifth book yeah in the fifth book in the fifth film dumbledore is fighting against voldemort and they're just kind of throwing everything and bringing statues to life and there's just a gigantic battle that's pretty much magicians impossible the entire book series just when they're clashing it's just all this teleporting everywhere and and, and just utilizing every object to attack each other and people dying like crazy it's, it's fantastic in its own way but everything else just oh god what is the point i'm gonna leave it at that people i don't understand the point of 90 percent of this book I finished it slightly confused. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Let me know what you think down below. Comment. Leave your opinions. Like, subscribe. And you can check out the website, geeseandbarbells.com, which I have started writing back again. And I will continue or else I will shoot myself in the face. Have fun, everybody.